Have a proper giggle, I'll be quite polite When I rock the mic, I rock the mic You got no love and you're with the wrong man And it's time to move your body If you can't get a girl but your best friend can It's time to move your body I don't wanna be sleazy Baby, just tease me Got no family plans Houston, do you hear me? Ground control, can you feel me? Hey there, welcome to Soda Sessions. I'm here with a dear friend today, amazing artist, songwriter, multi instrumentalist, <laughs> <laughs> Ruby Jackson, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. I've been getting everyone to clap every time, but sometimes it's a bit. Yeah. I think you got the best, okay. the best clap so far, to be honest. Perfect. <laughs> That's how oh. it should be. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I feel like we've come into each other's lives like semi recently yeah. and just had so much to talk about on a music level and been around some amazing people as well in some amazing rooms. Yeah. So it's nice that the result of that is that we got to end up here today. I and know, it's crazy. Play a Robbie Williams cover that no one wanted but like deserves to have. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, that was such a good choice. 
with being an artist and a songwriter? What's kind of happened for you on an artistic and creative level to get yeah. to this point? I love writing across all the genres. Mm, I and can it's, tell. It's so nice because I understand the world of jazz lyrics mm. and like standards and then I understand the R&B thing and I love the hip hop thing so much. Mm. And I think it all perfectly meshes together and you're able to take like foundations from each genre. Mm. Is there like a difference between the kind of jazz scene here in Sydney and maybe like the hip hop R&B scene? A lot of people are writing in jazz, but it is a very um, performance based, gig based world. Mm. You're hanging out throughout the week at, you know, the, the pubs where jazz is happening or the venues, the amazing music venues. Um, and everyone's just performing and it's, it's just like a, it's a big performance culture. I think the R&B scene and yeah, the world that we're colliding in is a very studio world. Mm. And we're in the studio a lot and that's like our magical place. And I love it so much. Oh, it sounds so nice. What's your process compared to writing a song just on the guitar and then being in a room where it's a bit more collaborative? Sometimes like, writing on the guitar, I'm I'm boxed into this idea. Mm. Like, there's only so far that I can hear a song. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm. It's just it's just me and the guitar and whatever I'm playing is happening and that's that. Whereas I think sometimes when, you, when you're in a studio, you're hearing so much more and maybe that's because you're in a studio, you're, you're next to these people, you're thinking mm. about their sound, your sound. Mm. So you can just in a musical way, travel further. Mm. And it's also it's also hard sometimes when you do hear things in your head and you're like, okay, this sounds great for me. Mm. <laughs> How am I able to like let these others know that, mm. that, that the song should do this or the chords should get here? Our song just came out, Out of Fashion. Yes. How has that been like to have released that? And I know we've talked a little bit about the weirdness and between making a song yeah. and then yeah, yeah. It going from hard drive to distribution. What's that been like for you? And obviously it's it's an amazing song. Yeah, um, I guess, yeah, the making process of it was mm. crazy. It was kind of finished like last year. Mm. But um, as songs do, they kind of, <laughs> they linger around and, mm. and you think about how you want to deliver the song to the world. Sometimes you wish you could just make it and then like give it to everyone. Yeah. But that can't always happen. It's like the trials and tribulations of being an artist. Yeah. You know, just the things that come with making it and then having to convince people to listen to it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all all part of our world, which is, I think it's just like a process of, of coming to terms with those things and then just learning to, to find where your strengths in those areas are as well. And mm. someone like you, I think your music kind of speaks for itself. Uh, mm, mm. What's your approach to your live show? Because I know when you're in the studio, you know, you're hearing horns and yeah. a lot of amazing elements that just kind of complement you. How do you approach kind of translating that onto to a live stage? Mm. I guess I want the the music created on on the live stage to feel like it's being made on the spot in a way. Wow. You're delivering them in a way that you only get to really experience at a live show and I think we've spoken about that. Mm. Like live shows kind of have that role to mm. to present your music to your fans or whoever's there in in a slightly different way. Like mm. whatever you whatever you deliver that night is never gonna be exactly the same as mm. as the song on the platforms. Mm. And I think that's a really exciting part. You get to extend the songs and have these big outros and mm. and just have everyone vibing. Yeah. And the way the songs are played by the musos is also such a different feeling to like a song being produced and you get to just break it down and hype it up I, yeah. I don't, it's so exciting thank you so much for coming through today for Thanks a little for robbie williams moment yeah. you know i'm so glad we got to do that and uh out of fashion ruby jackson is out now go stream that it's incredible i love you you're an amazing friend amazing musician <laughs> and uh thank you for coming through today thanks for having me no worries <laughs> boom <laughs>